Now, today's top stories and Power of 5 weather from News 5, sponsored by Akron Children's Hospital. Good Sunday morning, Northeast Ohio. As we ease into the holiday home stretch for the folks in Washington and Columbus, it is a holiday break that has already begun, but not before a flurry of activity, starting with these, the new congressional district maps in Ohio, maps that, as of a week ago today, still hadn't seen the light of day. The Republican sponsors of the map at the state's proposed new 15 congressional districts see them as fair and competitive. This map has six seats that lean Republican, seven seats that are competitive, and two seats that lean Democrat. Democrats and independent groups, though, disagree. Princeton gerrymandering project giving the map a grade of F, a 10-2 Republican advantage with two more seats leaning Republican and one more leaning Democrat. Some of the notable configurations include the 5th District here in Orange that links Lorraine County in with three counties on the Indiana border. A drive from North Ridgeville to Salina that would be about three hours. It also puts Parma in the same district as Conneaut. Those speaking against the maps before they passed out of committee argued they fly in the face of the constitutional amendment that created what was to be a fairer, more open process involving both parties. Back in 2010, when these maps from the next 10 years that were adopted, it was all done in private. It happened again. The maps were approved by the Senate Tuesday and House on Thursday without Democratic support, making them just four-year maps. Governor DeWine on Saturday signing the bill creating them into law. A legal challenge against them is likely next. While Democratic State Representative Amelia Strong Sykes of Akron reminded her colleagues this week that voters in the state have the right to appeal the bad bill by referendum, as she said they did a decade ago with Senate Bill 5. The people of the state have the opportunity to do that again. Not a lot of time, though. If you want to file to run for one of these seats, you have to do so by February 2nd. Well, action was taken this week in Washington on the bipartisan infrastructure deal. It is a package the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, tells me will be very good for Ohio. With pen to paper, President Biden signing into law the biggest single investment in America's infrastructure since the post-World War II Eisenhower years. This is good news for Cleveland. This is good news for America. Speaking exclusively with News 5, Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg spoke of the roughly $10 billion coming to Ohio just for roads and bridges. In Ohio alone, there are more than 1,000 bridges in poor condition and nearly 5,000 miles of highway that are in poor condition. We have a chance to do something about that now and the actual resources to do it with. But there's more to this, he said, than the construction jobs that will be needed to carry out the work. Coming from a place like uh, South Bend, Indiana and seeing how uh, Cuyahoga County reminds me of home in terms of the importance of manufacturing. The segment of the economy poised for growth, he said, because of the Made in America requirements in the bill. No foreign steel for the new bridges and the new buses and rail cars designed and built here. This could also be transformative for Cleveland's Amtrak station. There's $66 billion for the biggest expansion in Amtrak's 50-year history with Cleveland playing a pivotal part. Amtrak leaders have already started the ball rolling on 3C Plus D, a new rail service they want connecting Cleveland and Cincinnati with stops in Columbus and Dayton. Governor DeWine has said he wants to know what the long-term cost of the state is before signing off on it. With the act now signed into law, Buttigieg says, let's talk. We're looking forward to making sure that that's a reality. It's definitely going to benefit the industrial Midwest. Well, keeping with the travel and Amtrak theme, Amtrak's next train for Chicago leaves tomorrow morning at 3 a.m., getting there about seven hours later. But what if you were able to cut that to, say, a half hour? Well, plans to move the Hyperloop forward also advance this week, as we got to see inside for the first time what that experience might be like. While we have talked about Hyperloop travel since it was announced in 2018, one day taking passengers from Cleveland to Chicago in 28 minutes or Cleveland to Pittsburgh in 19, the renderings have always been from the outside. Now for the first time, Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, the group behind the Cleveland project, is giving us the inside look. This is the interior that we're building for the first Hyperloop system. So a version of this is what you'll be able to ride for the first Hyperloop between Chicago and Cleveland. The capsules of around 100 feet in length use passive magnetics to levitate and essentially a vacuum tube where they can travel smoothly at speeds of up to 700 miles an hour. The ride is completely smooth, so you and I could, could drink a cup of coffee. It's spacious. We have this, this really interesting artificial sunlight technology, artificial skylight. It feels like you're outside or we can turn it into the night sky. Um, we have speakers embedded in the headrests. It's personalized so the seat knows who you are, it knows your name if you wanted to, where you're able to pick up on your Netflix show right where you left off at home. 
just by flipping open the tablet and, um, and by biometric scan. The big boost to their efforts coming this week in the infrastructure package. While there was no direct funding, it recognized Hyperloop as a future form of transportation, opening it to federal funding and programs that other forms of transportation can already access. Well, it's exciting. You know, the possibility for Hyperloop uh, is for passenger rail, but also freight rail. And you can go a lot faster and, you know, less friction. And so there's, there's a lot of advantages to it. And the new legislation does provide some funding for that kind of innovative transportation technology. Testing continues at the company's test track in France, and the Cleveland project, they say, remains on track to possibly be the first of the Hyperloop projects in the country to go forward. Testing continues to go well. I mean, we're, we're still on track. So for you guys in Cleveland, it's, you know, before the end of the decade, we want to bring Hyperloop to you, to do Chicago, and, and, and if you want, Pittsburgh. Future plans would also extend that service to New York. With Democracy 2021, I'm John Kasich. Enjoy your Sunday, and if I don't see you before then, Happy Thanksgiving. I'm Power 5 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Cloudy, cool, and wet out there for today. Widespread rain for much of the afternoon. Grab the jacket and the umbrella. Middle 40s for the high today. Sponsored by Akron Children's Hospital.